Before we start this episode, I would like to remind you all to go and drink some water. It will keep you happy and hydrated over the course of the summer months. Hi everybody, how you doing? Welcome back, it's you, it's me, I'm Grant, you're my team. Previously where we left off, uh, we just conquered the Great Bridge of Murden. Yay! So, story. Well done everyone, the Great Bridge of Murden is ours. Now it's on me to return to Alliance territory and convince those lords to join us. For those of you who live in Alliance territories, I ask that you return to your houses and spread the word about the current situation. Until we finish our preparations, Judith and the Knights will do everything in their power to defend the Great Bridge. <laughs> That's a casual way to dole out such a deadly mission, boy. Do you object? Just who do you think I am? I won't let the Empire pass this way, even if it costs me my life. Too bad you're not allowed to die. Fight like your life depends on it, but flee if you're ever truly in danger. A tall order, as always. I'll use my best discretion, Claude. We have no objections either. Go forth and secure us a sufficiently powerful army. What about me? I'll stay here too. Actually, I'd like for you to come with me, Teach, to help negotiate with the Lords. They're followers of the Church of Seros, after all. It'll make things easier if we have someone there to speak on Rhea's behalf. All right, everyone. Let's meet back at the monastery next month. Good luck out there. Is that you, kiddo? <clears throat> I have returned, Nardell. Oh, ah, Master Claude, it's you. I mistook you for one of the local children. My apologies. It seems you have adjusted to your work here. Our recent strategy was successful, thanks to you. I was a bit concerned when House Goneril's army intervened from the east. Count Gloucester must have requested reinforcements from them. Yes, and they have that young general who won some acclaim from his battles in Almira. Regardless, they showed no signs of seriously wishing to attack us, and merely fulfilled their obligations to House Gloucester. Now then, who is this lovely lady? This is my professor, who I asked to join me at the Roundtable Conference. Teach, this is Nardell, that retainer Judith was talking about. Nice to meet you. How polite! I've heard good things about you from Master Claude. As you can see, he wasn't born in Fodlan. Still, trust me when I say he is highly capable. True! In fact, my capability is my only redeeming quality. I hope you'll continue to look after Master Claude, Professor. You got it, Nadair. Part 2. Verdant Wind. Great Tree Moon. Blood of the Eagle and Lion. Now in control of the Great Bridge of Murden, the Alliance Army invades the Imperial territories. In response, the Imperial Army garrisons soldiers at Fort Mercius. Oh, right, okay, you bitches need to understand something right now. This chapter, Blood of the Eagle and Lion, is my all-time favorite chapter. The stakes could not be higher, and everything about this chapter is perfection. People don't like this one on maddening mode. I have never played this one on maddening mode. All of that went about as well as it could have. Each Lord has agreed to provide us with soldiers and supplies. I'm impressed you were able to convince all of those scattered nobles to help us. I thought they would quarrel about how much support they should each provide. That's what they usually do. Well, Count Gloucester took the initiative in taking on responsibilities. And that was all thanks to Teach here acting as a stand-in for Rhea. Thanks for that, by the way. I hope you don't feel like I used you, because I sort of used you. Don't mention it. I'm not well pleased. I understand. You're having a hard time adjusting to your new role, aren't you? You weren't even a follower of Seros to begin with, and somehow you've ended up as a representative of the church. 
I realize that you might feel guilty about deceiving the believers for our cause, but this is just what the Archbishop wanted, and she's the highest authority in the church. Besides, as wielder of the sword of the Creator, it's undeniable that you're special. I think you should be more confident in yourself and use your position to the fullest. I have news. Our enemy is gathering troops at Fort Mercius. Their army is immense, likely led by a renowned general, or perhaps even... Edelgard? Well now, that would be interesting. If we can defeat the Emperor, then the Empire will collapse. There's something else. An unidentified army has approached the Great Bridge of Murden. They passed through the Daphnil and Gloucester territories from the northwest with incredible speed. They're raising the banner of House Blathed. Perhaps they are the remnants of the Fargus royal family. From what we could tell, they posed no threat to the citizens of the Alliance, and so we refrain from engaging them in needless combat. Maybe they hope to fight against the Empire to avenge their fallen prince. And what about the bridge itself? Obviously, we wouldn't let them pass without receiving envoys first. We thought they may try to force their way through. We considered firing warning arrows, but they left immediately, heading east. Are they intending to use one of the bridges in Ordelia territory? Most likely. But the Imperial Army still controls those bridges. I can't imagine what they intend to do in the Empire, even if they do manage to break through. I'm reluctant to ease up on our surveillance, but it would be difficult to track them there. For now, let's assume they're just troops belonging to the Old Kingdom. In any case, we should proceed with caution. Soon we'll be entering Empire territory ourselves. If our enemies are going to intercept us with an attack, it will probably be at Grander Field. How fitting that it was the site of the Battle of the Eagle and Lion five years ago. Ooh, it's coming full circle. Ah, oh, yay, and we have paralogues to do. Great, but also boo. So, Claude accepted the Silk Dragon Armor from Nardell and obtained the certification for the Barbarossa class. Oh, he looks so good! My next steps are clear. He looks so good, you guys! Okay, 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 right. Oh, we have support com- Oh, we have a lot of support conversations to get through, but more importantly, Reclass Claude from Barbarossa. Back down to Sniper. Thank you, good boy. My next steps are clear. And then... I don't suppose... Oh, the Sleeping Sand Legend. And Retribution. Oh, we have two very good paralogues. Okay, we will not do those yet. We will get through these support conversations. We will get our world building done. And then, we will do Sauna, and that's going to be it for this episode. Right, okay, so, supports. Your bond with Marianne is deep. You should try listening when they're ready to speak with you. Freddy, Sylvain, wow, there's a lot of people that want to speak to a moi. Okay. Hey, Ignatz. What are you doing here? Uh, hello? Oh, you're painting. Ingrid, what are you doing here? I could ask you the same. I did ask you the same. Anyway, I'm just visiting the cathedral. I must say, that painting is looking wonderful. Ah, uh, don't look, don't look! Why not? It really looks great. Really? I wouldn't lie. Let me have a look. Oh, it's the statue of St. Saros. I hope you don't think I was ignoring you. When I'm painting, I get totally absorbed. Of course not. My feelings aren't hurt so easily. Hmm. What if you gave her a more edgy outfit? Shorten up her skirt or something? No, that would be improper. Ooh, and how about making her sword bigger? Oh, oh, turn her into a valiant knight. But she's not a knight. Aw, oh, come on. Just this once? <sighs> huh. She doesn't exactly look like a knight. More like a maniacal demigod. 
Yeah, it just kind of came out that way. It's different. Not quite how I envisioned. It's my fault. I should have stuck to my original idea. I'm sorry I pushed you, Ignatz. I'll leave you be. Mercedes! Finally! There you are. Ah, oh, Ferdinand! Why are you so short of breath? I just wanted to show you something. What's this? Um... Oh! Yes. These are financial records that I recovered from your adoptive father. They prove that when he adopted you, large sums of money changed hands. Where did you come across these? I stealthily made my way into Ferdiad and looked around his estate. It was easy. That kind of thing is no trouble for an intrepid young noble such as myself. That's amazing! I mean, amazingly irresponsible. I can't believe you put yourself at risk for my benefit. I really wish you wouldn't do such things. No, I did it for my benefit. I could not help myself. With these documents, we can show everyone what a scoundrel your adoptive father really is. His noble aspirations will be crushed. The Lord of the Region will probably rescind his adoption contract. In other words, you will be free. Here, take them. Do with them what you will. Do you really believe these will set me free? Yes, of course. You will be free to decide your own path in life and go wherever your heart leads you. That does sound nice, but... I'm sorry, Ferdinand, but I think you should hold on to the documents. Why? Is this not what you want? I've lived so much of my life following everyone else's lead, so much so that I've come to terms with it. It's almost unavoidable at this point. But with these, I could regain my freedom and change all that. You baffle me. Do you not wish to be free? <laughs> of course I do. Let me try that again in a way you might understand. Ahem. A true noble cuts their own path, seizing freedom from the clutches of tyranny. <laughs> I cannot argue with that. Fine then. I will hold on to the documents. <laughs> but... I'm really very happy that you're so concerned with my well-being, Ferdinand. It means so much to me that you went through all that trouble on my behalf. Of course, Mercedes. The smile on your face is well worth the effort. Nightfall? Already? I suppose I'd better wrap up. Good work with your training today, Ingrid. Here's something to wipe up the sweat. Whoa, Mercedes. Hi! Hello. How long have you been... Um, thank you. You're very welcome. I've been here since you started. Not long. Huh. Well, my apologies for not having noticed you. I get so caught up in training, you know. But why are you here? I can't imagine it was too terribly interesting watching me. I disagree. I just couldn't help but admire your training technique. I have to say, you are very impressive. I'm nowhere near as graceful as you. Graceful? I wouldn't say that, but thank you. If I'm to be honest, I'm the one who admires you. Goodness me, how so? You're always so put together. You hold yourself with such poise and have such a keen eye for fashion. I mean, even the handkerchief you handed me smells like... Lavender, is it? It's just lovely. That perfume is a favorite of mine. I'm so glad you like it. Even the fact that you thought to put perfume on your handkerchief is delightfully foreign to me. I'd never have thought of that. I'll gladly share some with you. You're welcome to come visit my room whenever you'd like. We can have tea and chat. How does that sound? Uh, that sounds really nice. Yes. <laughs> Sipping tea and having a chat. It's unlike me, but it sounds lovely. From now on, we'll meet up whenever we have time. We can go right now if you're free. Oh, no need to trouble yourself and rearrange things for me. It's no trouble at all. 
You'll never know if you're the type who enjoys chatting over tea if you never try. <laughs> All right, then. So, what is it, Yuri? You had me come all this way. I need you for something. Have a seat. I won't take much of your time. Okay. My apologies for keeping you waiting. Here you are. Oh, wow. Did you make this yourself? I may not seem like much of a chef, but I know a thing or two about cooking. Looks tasty, hmm? Can I, uh, eat it now? I'm famished after all the training. How bet. That's why I asked you here. I see. Well, thank you. Don't mind if I do. Oh, this dish is divine. The first bite just melts in your mouth, and these vegetables are perfect. The flavors are interwoven together like... Like a dance of swords between two Myrmidons. <laughs> Calm yourself, Ingrid. I'm in no need of a critique. I just want you to enjoy it and take a load off. Aw, thank you. I will. <sighs> that was delicious, Yuri. I cannot thank you enough. I'm glad. Then it was worth all the toil that went into preparing it. You haven't eaten anything for yourself? I figured I'd eat something a bit later. I didn't make the meal for me. You cooked only for me? Mm-hmm. The innkeeper provided me with some of his finest meat and told me to feed you. I figured if I was going to do it, I'd better do it right. So I popped into the kitchen and got working. That won't do at all, Yuri. Meals are meant to be shared. It seems my stomach got the better of me this time, though. And I scarfed everything before remembering that. Why bother yourself with such trivialities? The meal was a gift. Seeing you enjoy yourself like that is all the reward I need. What way is that? A bit like when you had all that meat stuffed into your cheeks at the marketplace. Like some kind of chipmunk. <laughs> I like seeing the contentment on your face when you cut loose. You do? The innkeeper couldn't have said it better. She's got a real foodie face, that one. <sighs> I'm not quite sure how to feel. <laughs> really, though. There are a few things I enjoy as much as seeing a woman indulging herself. You should consider your words before using them. Such a flirtatious comment can only invite misunderstandings. I didn't mean it that way. Let me get this straight. The stars aren't moving, but the ground we stand on is? Yep. We're on a big round thing that's always spinning. And that's why the stars seem to move through the sky. Hard to believe, isn't it? But it's true. I admit I'm having a difficult time wrapping my head around it. How is it you know these things, anyway? If you were a noble, it would make sense that you'd have a formal education on all of this. In the village where I was born, there were people who studied the stars. They taught me. A village of stargazing folk, huh? Do tell. I've never heard of such a place. It's a very well-hidden village. It was a small settlement deep in the forest, where no one ever bothered us. I was born there, grew up there. But when I got older, I felt like I needed to see the world. I couldn't live my whole life in one place, you know? So I struck out on my own. <laughs> I always knew you were an odd little bird, but... Your birthplace makes you a rare little bird. Yeah, well, pretty soon after leaving her nest, this rare little bird was put in a cage. I thought it might be some kind of punishment for leaving the forest. What the hell? You think that because you wanted to live your life, you'd be punished? That's ridiculous. Look at this objectively. Was it punishment? Or was it just plain bad luck? There's nothing wrong with wanting to see the world and expand your horizons. Take me. Had I never left that gutter I call home, I'd have gone my whole life never learning how to look at the stars. Yeah. I left my village because I thought I'd find a better life beyond the forest. Now, I'm not so sure. Regret is pointless. 
What matters is how we live right here, right now. You know? Yeah. Do you ever want to return back home? I could say no, but I'd be lying. I've been feeling homesick lately. Nothing happened there, for better or worse. There wasn't much to be scared of. Everyone said the outside world was dangerous. That beyond the forest, all we'd find was an early grave. That wasn't exactly true, but my life was for sure easier when I lived there. I used to spend my days fishing, hunting for pretty flowers, running around for no reason. A rare occurrence indeed. What is? Seeing you smile in that way. You're always so... I don't know. Neutral? That's not true. I smile when there's something to smile about. It's strange, though. When I'm talking to you, I can't help but let my guard down. I don't like to discuss where I came from. But with you, I feel like I can open up. You know, I've been thinking a lot about my mom and dad lately. I wonder... Are they even alive? Brother! Flame, is something the matter? I thought I made it clear that I do not want you meddling in the affairs of me and my friends! I am not quite sure what you are referring to, but I promise you I would never try to stand in your way. It has come to my attention that you have been running about asking people what they think of me. Asking everyone! Well, of course I have. It took me quite some time. But for you, it was well worth the effort. I was able to confirm that you are getting along well with everyone. It was very reassuring. I cannot emphasize enough how embarrassed I was when I found out. And you have caused such a stir for those whom you questioned. Why, one person even said he feared for his life when you cornered him in the dining hall! The dining hall? Ah, I know the fellow you are referring to. Yes, I've seen the way he looks at you. I recognized in an instant that he had impure feelings for you. As your brother, I took it upon myself to test his resolve. I merely asked him if he was prepared to lay his life on the line for my beloved sister. He is nothing more than a friend! Kindly keep out of my social business in the future! I am happy to see that you are making friends, but you should weigh your options more carefully. Who I befriend is absolutely none of your business! Do you know what they call people like you? Overprotective meddlers! I am no longer a child! Are you incapable of trusting me, even a little? Of course I trust you, but... As an elder brother, I have a certain responsibility. As my brother? Obviously. Oh, never mind it. If you'll excuse me. Oh, what's the use? Even with all I've learned, I still don't understand. Hello, Constance. I hope I'm not interrupting. Not at all. I was just in need of a sympathetic ear. I found a magical scroll, which, unless I am mistaken, should relieve me of my woes. Oh, wonderful! Not so fast. The magic within this scroll is a type I have neglected to study. It pains me to admit this, but it may take decades of going back to the basics to grasp it. Decades? That's a long time to spend with your nose buried in an old piece of parchment. Why must the goddess dangle a solution before me, only to cruelly pull it away? There's no need to despair. To tell the truth, I like you just as you are. You do? Why? Those low moods of mine have never done anyone the least bit of good. You're like a little sister to me. Nothing you do will change that. Not even a little bit. Really? Of course, you're my sweet Constance, and I like you just as you are. I... I see. Perhaps my moods are not the great burden I thought they were. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to pressure you. 
No matter what decision you make, I support you. I felt no pressure, I assure you. It's more that I feel embarrassed to have been embarrassed. I'd put so much effort into finding a magical means to alleviate myself that it never occurred to me that maybe all I needed was to accept myself. What will you do with the scroll you found? Oh, I'll continue to research it, for research's sake, if nothing else, but I may have no need of it. It's not as if these moods of mine have ever hampered my efforts to restore my house. And I am as a sister to you, no matter which face I present, yes? Nothing, no mood, no foe, no obligation, will keep me from honoring my sisterly duty to protect you. <laughs> we can protect each other. Good. It is settled. Now we can begin the hard work of reclaiming our titles. Absolutely. We'll become sister sages and restore our houses to their former glory. You understand the plan perfectly. If we walk this path together, it can only end in triumph. <laughs> Okay, good, right. Claude was saying that our next battle might be in Grounder Field. Is that right? Reminds me of the Battle of the Eagle and Lion. But of course, that was a very different time. When it was over, all three class heads complimented each other on their bravery. And then we had a party. But we can never go back to that, can we? Excuse me, could you do me a favor? Hey! Hi there! No. It's like this. I'm a graduate of the Golden Deer House, but that was a little before your time, Professor. We won the Battle of the Eagle and Lion. Of course, we mostly have Holtz to thank for that. And now he's the greatest general in the Alliance. I didn't do so great in comparison. <sighs> Pardon me. Oh. Ah, uh, that hurts. Ah, Professor, thanks for stopping by. How's your injury? You got hurt protecting me. It's not bad. I was even told I'd be cleared for service starting tomorrow. Besides, I got this scar fighting for you. It's almost like a medal or something. Didn't you want to kill me? Are you happy you protected me? I certainly meant it when I said it, but... Problem boy. When I thought you were going to be killed for real, my reflexes kicked in. I reacted without thinking. It doesn't mean I've stopped being jealous of you. But come on, I can't help but look up to you. If I'd had the guts to run away from home, I wonder if I would have cared as little about my crest as you do yours. You didn't have the courage? No. But if I thought I could have escaped, I would have tried. I'd leave behind House Gautier and the life of a nobleman. Got it. Anybody who knew I had a crest. Our home is to the very north of the kingdom. Just across the mountains from us is land inhabited by foreigners to Fodlan. It once belonged to Fargus, but now that the kingdom has collapsed, it's only a matter of time until fighting breaks out. Anyway, that land has been contested for centuries, and all that time, it has fallen to House Gautier to protect it. Actually, our lands of ruin has been doing most of the protecting. But it was stolen. I remember. Five years ago. Those were dangerous times. One wrong step, and we would have lost our relic to the church. 
My father was afraid that the church would try to keep the lands, so he entrusted it to me. If an emergency arose, I was supposed to be called back home. I guess those very situations are why my family values Crest so much. Since I bear a crest, my parents made sure I was never left wanting. My older brother didn't have one, and so when I was born, he was pushed aside. You know, he once shoved me in a well. He left me on the mountainside in the middle of winter, too. That's horrible. You didn't try to get him back? <sighs> Even as a little kid, I understood why he was like that. My mere existence stole everything from him. I have no right to complain when I am surrounded by people who would give anything to bear a crest, but do not. Now, women smile at me for the same reason my parents adore me, and my brother wanted me dead. And I have to meet them all with a smile and a wink, because I have a crest. So what you really feel toward women is... The women who just want to use me to become nobility? Hatred's probably the right word. Though, in the end, that's just an easy answer. I don't even know how I truly feel about it all. Anyway, it was pretty unreasonable of me to resent you. I'm really sorry about that. And I want to say thank you, Professor. Seriously, thank you. For what? Before I met you, I'd gone my whole life not knowing there was another way for me to live. So... From the bottom of my heart, I'm glad we met. Thoughts we have many. Head empty. Ignatz sweaty. <laughs> Dorothea Betty. <laughs> Some of you are thinking, who the hell is Betty? It's a Taylor Swift reference. Why did you overheat like that? There you go. You have my thanks. What do you mean? Why? How? Thank you so much. Okay. I don't get it. They seem fine, and then they're melting. And this has never happened before. Right, uh, Balthus, this time, and set it. I know for a fact it's not because I'm increasing steam that much. We have been fine this entire playthrough doing this. I'm 
I'm gonna just stay a little longer. What pity? Yay! See, now you've gaslit me. I question my judgment. Hey, I could use a hand. Medicinal herb. Okay. Uh, we still need to world build, so... Since Little Claude became their leader, the Alliance Lords haven't been especially unified. Now they're suddenly united for a common cause. As a result, the Empire hasn't been able to perform even one successful incursion. Rather, we're the ones who might get the jump on them. It's incredible. Magical, even. Maybe his strategic genius was simmering for those five years, and it returned to a full boil once you two were reunited. Or maybe he always knew he'd meet you again, and he was preparing for that this whole time. The time's come to fight the Empire, huh? Wow, it's shaping up to be quite the battle. And I've got no problem with that. But that mystery army really worries me. There's no indication if they're friend or foe. Who do you think they are, Professor? Dimitri himself? <laughs> Not unless he rose from the grave to secure revenge. That would mean... Actually, I have no idea what that would mean. Well, whoever they are, I hope we can avoid fighting them. Sadly, the game will not allow that. So, teach me how to axe. So, we're finally moving into enemy territory. We can expect the war to get even more intense from here on out. I'm really feeling the tension now. I have almost no experience with battles of this scale. Professor, I'll be grateful for your leadership on the battlefield. I know I can trust you. Remind me who you are again. Oh, it's my boy. Hmm. What an interesting way of looking at life. Ah, it is you. Just at the right time. You're working late. The right time. Oh, is it nighttime already? I must have gotten carried away. There is something I wanted to discuss. Something about you. I am starting to believe that you are a true hero. You hold the Lost Crest, you wield the Sword of the Creator, and you lead everyone in battle against great enemies. Not only that, but you are a strategist. You stand alongside rulers, supporting them, advising them. You do not seem particularly ambitious. And yet, you accomplish so much. That's high praise. That's true. I'm not ambitious. I am amazed that you can say so. I have been reading about the history of Fargus, you know. The kingdom's founder, Lug, the king of lions, had two advisors. One of them was Pan, the undesiring strategist. According to historical records, Pan wanted nothing for himself. He devoted himself entirely to Lug. He had tremendous power, but he never seemed concerned about his legacy. So in the old chronicles, there is hardly any mention of Pan's deeds. All that we know is that he helped Lug, his friend and leader. To think someone could be so virtuous. I've never heard of Pan. It is not surprising that you have never heard of him. I did not even know his name until recently. But when I watch how you conduct yourself, I feel that I am seeing the unknown deeds of Pan. It is only a thought, of course, but it makes me feel rather happy. Even if it is not in the pages of a history book, a life can be full of achievement. I know that I will never prevail over Edelgard. 
even if I defeat her on the battlefield, I am what I am. Like you and this undesiring strategist, I will do what I am called to do, even if no mark of me remains in the history books. Thanks to our victory, I've been able to study the Great Bridge of Murden at my leisure. And you know what? It's an astounding structure. So much history there. Imagine how much time and effort it must have taken to build something that big. Over water, no less. I hope that someday, it will be opened up to the people of Fodlan. A historical site, rather than a military checkpoint. We captured the Great Bridge of Murden, but the fight has only just begun. Enbar, the Imperial Capital, lies far to the south beyond Grander Field. And waiting for us on the way there is the entire Imperial Army, with twice as many troops as us. We had better brace ourselves. The Battle of the Eagle and Lion. Has it truly been five years since then? Can you recall whether it was before or after I joined your class, Professor? After. I'm glad you have not forgotten. It was shortly after I joined your class. I remember it like it was yesterday. I can hardly believe we're crossing the borders of the Empire to battle their army. Never thought I'd see the day. You'd never guess from the calm looks on everyone's faces, though. I mean, we're probably all gonna die, let's be honest. If you don't mind me saying, you don't look like you're in the middle of a crisis either. Oh, um, perhaps that was a little rude of me? Hmm, actually it's the Great Tree Moon now, isn't it? Not that anyone's in much of a mood to celebrate the new year, of course. I've got to keep this place clean, and I mean properly clean, every day. Dust it, sweep it, everything. You never can tell when Lady Rhea might be back. Greetings, Professor. Nothing to report. I hear we're sending troops to Grander Field next. Is that what's what? That whole area is in the territory of House Burgley's. It's famous as the main granary of Fodland. If we could capture it, we probably wouldn't have to worry about food anymore. Bread for all! Since you secured the Great Bridge of Murden, trade got a lot easier within the Empire. Nevertheless, profits are rather thin compared to how it was five years ago. You can't be much of a trader unless you're prepared to traverse the whole of Fodlan. Thanks. I'm glad I asked you. Edelgard's presence suggests that Hubert is around too. He is Minister of the Imperial Household, after all. He's been around Edelgard since they were children. I suppose he must be pretty happy with his current position. I've cut all contact with my family since joining this fight. Were I to see soldiers of the Galatea family amidst the host flying the royal family's banner, I... Well, all chance of reconciliation with my father would end there. I do not know if that is the right path, but the fact is, I've come this far. There's no time for second guessing. Not anymore. Dear Goddess, I ask for guidance. Professor, you're always watching over me, aren't you? Of course. I've spent my life avoiding people, so I wouldn't have to expose them to this horrible burden of a crest. My father was born with it as well. He's the one who told me to avoid others as much as possible. He said it would be the cause of great unhappiness to both myself and everyone around me. After some time, I was only truly comfortable opening up to animals and the goddess. Do you remember the time you asked what it was I prayed for? Thanks and protection? Yes. But Gratitude and Jurex? Back then, <gasps> no! I had no purpose, and that I was nothing more than a burden. In truth, I was begging the goddess to take me to her. That was my daily prayer. But now I fear the idea of dying and being left alone. I have friends who accept me for who I am now, in spite of my crest. And I have you watching over me. I finally learned to accept the kindness and warmth of others. It's because of you, Professor. Because of you, I've decided to live. 
I'm sorry to have worried you, but I'm all right now. I'm still not ready to tell everyone about my crest, but I feel that the burden of my curse has been lifted. Even if I'm separated from you or any of my friends, the memories I've made here will give me the strength to continue on. You should look to the future instead of the past. Um... From now on, we'll look to the future together. Oh, I'm sure I'll have You should look to, to the future instead together. of the past. From now on, we'll look to the future together. Reconnaissance is becoming more of a risk the deeper we move into enemy territory. If I don't come back, assume I'm dead. Understood. Good. We have to be realistic. Don't waste your energy worrying about me. So, we're finally going to set foot in the Empire. I'm starting to get a little nervous. I guess there's a good chance we'll be fighting more old friends from here on out. Teach me how to spell cast. Yay. There is still more to learn. Claude seems filled with confidence, but I wonder if everything really will be okay. The Imperial Army might be hiding the Emperor, and the troops headed south might belong to the Old Kingdom. I'll be honest, I'm incredibly uneasy about all of this. But at this point, there's no option but to move forward. I trust you and Claude, but I feel uneasy. If we lose in the next battle, the Empire's army will likely come surging into Alliance territory. If that happens, my parents won't escape unharmed. They've raised their anti-Imperial flag after all. I won't let that happen. We can't take back what we've done. Thank you, Professor. I'll fight with all I've got to. Speaking with you has eased my mind a bit. Just enough, in fact, to put me in the mood for sweets. Um... I heard that some unidentified troops have appeared, but apparently they were flying the flag of the Fargus royal family. Do you think it was Dimitri's ghost? His country was taken before he ever wore the crown. Surely he must regret that. Each time we press forward, our search for Rhea broadens to a wider area. I certainly hope we will find at least some clue. But I do suspect I already know where she is. If I'm right, and she is in the Imperial capital. Then we cannot save her until we topple the Empire. We secured the win in our first skirmish, but the next battle is a different matter. The Empire will come after us with everything it's got. Even so, the ultimate victory will be ours. And I'm not just saying that. I've made ample preparations to ensure our victory. It's my rule to never leave victory to chance. You can't rely on the protection of the Goddess. With your power and my schemes, I should be able to plot a direct course to victory. If this mysterious military force is the remnants of the kingdom, I think there would have been the possibility of a united front. But from what I've heard, that's going to be difficult. Their behavior is very erratic. If they're clamoring for revenge and death, then it's probably better if we have nothing to do with them. So, we're finally invading Empire territory, huh? There's not much we can do right now. Except pray for deliverance. I truly believe that we have it in us to succeed. Sweet. Next. I... Okay. See? I... I... There is always more to learn. Hopefully this proves useful. Brings you make the I 
I'm... I'm... There's something I'd like to ask you. Seeing the cathedral in such a run-down state makes me feel so sorry for the goddess. As soon as this war is finally over, I'm going to devote myself to making this place more beautiful than ever. We should paint a beautiful mural on the ceiling. Let's plant flowers to make it more colorful. I think it looks kind of nice this way. Oh, of course! That's a lot of points. Professor. We need to promote, uh, promote Annette as well. If we can. In. Oh no! <laughs> Observe. We finished. This is I didn't even know I cared this much. Well, there you go. She got A plus. Wow. Well done. Now we just need to get her to S, and then she can get X crit plus ten. Ignaz, Sylvain, Ferdinand. They're literally neck and neck. Well, in terms of ranks, anyways. Sylvain's doing better than Ferdinand in terms of axes. Ferdinand's doing better than Sylvain in terms of brawling. <laughs> yeah, they're pretty much neck and neck then. Seteth, he'll catch up. I hope he does. And then Malthus. He's doing well. He's doing really, really well. But... I'm gonna leave it there. <laughs> If you've enjoyed this episode of Fire Emblem Three Houses, by all means feel free to press like and subscribe. Stick around, because it's always appreciated. And I will catch you next time when we do Claude's Paralogue. Yay! You won't want to miss it! See you soon, guys. Bye-bye.